Good afternoon and welcome to this latest uh, edition of the Battlestar Galactica documentary, a real cult classic sci-fi documentary. I'm joined by the one and only Grace Park uh, today, who played the character Sha Sharon Boomer Valeri, most commonly known uh, to people who follow the sci-fi show of uh, Battlestar Galactica as Boomer. Uh, I suppose that Grace, we're looking back now, you first started filming in 2004, you had four seasons, 2004, roughly 16 years ago now. Does it almost feel like 16 years ago that you were on set shooting Battlestar Galactica or does it feel only like yesterday? Actually, it does feel like longer and longer away. You know, it, it yeah. initially didn't, but I actually think we started shooting in 2003. Okay. I thought, no, you know what? You might, I'm sure you've done your research, but I, in my mind, I've always thought it was 2003. But I did, no I still live in the same city that we uh, shot. So I drove by the stages the other day and I was kind of reminiscing at the time of like going around the corner and going into the room or into the stages where it would open up into the hangar bay. And it was such yeah. a long time ago. And I suppose I agree, uh, the first season on the Sci-Fi Channel, you were the top rated show in America, in terms of the sci-fi channel, three million viewers a week in your first sort of season, uh, and outstanding sort of figures in terms of the sci-fi channel, and uh, it was it became a, a hit straight from the off. And I suppose you sort of went in your own pack from the original Battlestar Galactica, which starred mm -hmm. the original famous like Dirk Benedict, uh, we know as Spaceman from the uh, A-Team who was involved in the original Battlestar Galactica. You sort of went on a, a sort of a different route and made it more 21st sort of century sort of teams route, which was very successful because you sort of uh, went, to, you sort of kept elements from the past show but also obviously added in an awful lot new more elements and an awful lot more new characters. Yeah, we did. And that was the design from the beginning. But we knew it was a reimagining, but we weren't planning to try to stick to the original other than, like you said, some of the names. We were never going to add Moffat or Muffet, whatever, back in. Yeah. But we even had a character, Boxy, which I, I thought vaguely was supposed to be from the original. You know, and so certain things were tried, but if they didn't stick, then they kind of went away. And um, then of course, when you made Starbuck a woman, people did not like that. <laughs> so initially when we had our first Comic-Con, I think it was Katie Sackhoff who plays Starbuck and Jamie yep. Bam who plays Apollo and Ron Moore. And I think maybe David Icke went there. And uh, I heard that they got booed and I might've even had, they might've even had uh, food thrown at them, I think. Uh, I'm not certain I shouldn't be starting rumors, but it, it did not come well received in the very beginning. And though we were excited compared to network, the numbers are very low. So I think it was just anyone who was ready to have a big head about it ended up just being, you realize like it's, it was humbling mm. right away. And um, I thought maybe in the very beginning, their numbers weren't quite as high. I thought they were more around 1 million initially but it was from word of mouth that it got spread around and that it was a show to look out for. And you had to get past the name because some people didn't want to go back to the old Battlestar Galactica. And I suppose that uh, Grace, how did the opportunity come about for you to get involved in this show? Was it Boomer the only character that you tried out for or did you try out for sort of various roles in the show? And were you one of the first persons uh, cast for the show? Um, you know, when I first went for it, because they were shooting in Vancouver, there's, a, there's union rules. So they have to have a certain number of auditions and whatnot available. Um, and I first went in and being kind of a newer actor, I, um, I was offered or I uh, was offered an audition for yeah. Duala, who, is, okay. who ended up being played by Candice McClure. Okay. And I went in and I did that audition and they I was told to come back for Starbuck. And I, I think unconsciously, I was really nervous about that. And okay. I saw my coach and she said, what are you doing? Like, you're acting so weird. And she said, are you doing this because you think it's a lead? And I was like, I don't know. I was all beside myself. And uh, she said, stop doing that. And uh, so when I went to go for the screen test uh, after the audition, I believe, I went to Los Angeles. And at the same time, um, they were 
auditioning Boomer and, no, sorry, they were auditioning Starbuck and Apollo. And yeah. so Jamie Bamber was there, Katie Sackham was there, and there was a whole bunch of other people there at the same time. So I never actually auditioned for Boomer. And okay. um, yeah, I auditioned for Starbuck and it came down to four of us. So it was me and Katie, Jamie, and I forget the other fellow's name. And then we all went home and then I found out I got on a phone call a few days later that I got uh, Boomer and I wasn't happy about it. <laughs> so Grace, you're telling me yourself, Jamie and Katie, all three of you went for Starbuck and only Katie got the role. So then Jamie, obviously, and yourself were offered different roles that you didn't even try out for. No, Jamie was, he was going for Apollo. So they were, they did a whole bunch of guys and a whole bunch of girls. And okay. then that's very funny. Jamie went for Starbuck too. I <laughs> didn't get it. No, they were going for the two roles of the same day. And okay. then they had us auditioning at the same time. So okay. um, it kind of depended when your contract came through and got printed off of the printer. It was hot or like warm and you had to sign it. And then that meant you were next. And so it was, it seemed very random who was going up, but they always put one, you know, they were putting a boomer uh, with a, sorry, I keep doing that. They were putting a Starbuck with an Apollo. And at the end it was, they whittled it down and they told us to go home until we found out over the phone. And I suppose uh, Grace, once you found out uh, that you were playing Boomer, the character, I suppose your initial reaction, obviously you said you went for Starbuck, but the Boomer character was so varied uh, throughout the sort of four seasons. You were involved in nearly every episode. You had so many lines, you had so many different teams and plots uh, in terms of your character. It was probably a mysterious sort of character. And obviously you were the big revelation in the show from the start, obviously, you were the first outing in terms of the the crew of sort of Battlestar Galactica. So uh, obviously you were in, involved in most of the, the hot topic stuff in terms of the early season in Battlestar Galactica. That's true. You know, I, I would have been mortified if I actually had to play Starbuck because, I mean, compared to Katie, who just shone in that role, um, it would have been horrible if I were actually playing Starbuck. I think they made the best decision, but I didn't really know the original series. So I didn't know, well, Boomer, I don't think in the original was a Cylon. So, you know, they were, they were mixing some things up, but I was really, really thrilled to be able to be offered such a, not just an integ integral role, but um, such a big challenge. One that I've always felt like I was just trying to keep my head above water. And I suppose, uh, Grace, uh, one thing were blown away in terms of how much they could fit into one episode of Battlestar Galactica in terms of so much content um, really devolved into roughly what was 45, 50 minutes of a show. Uh, mm. But uh, in terms of that, what was the sort of shooting uh, like in terms of filming one episode of Battlestar Galactica? I imagine it must have taken nine, ten days to produce one episode with everything that went on. Well, in general with television, it takes about 12 hours of shooting to give you five minutes of television. So that will be roughly, if you have about a 40, 42 minute episode, that's roughly eight days of shooting. Hmm. Now, those were the earlier days where I wasn't paying attention to hours quite so much, but I remember there were certain days where we were having, uh, we were shooting, I think a 12 hour day is typical, but Actually, I think that's short. I think it kind of goes to 14 more typically, but I think there was a day that we were shooting 17 hours. You get tired and then you get a second wind and then you get tired again and then you get like a third wind. And I think that most of us are pretty young so we could just kind of keep pushing ourselves. You know, we're not partying out at a club. We're just, we're working, but it was like with wonderful people. And uh, Grace, what was the cast like in terms, no, no, I mean the production sets, the studios like in terms of the filming. I, I see that you filmed an awful lot in British Columbia and uh, Vancouver. And uh, in terms of the actual, the inside of the ships, uh, the sort of set, the studio set, what, how big were they and how, how long did they run in terms of it? Because obviously the ships looked like they went on forever, but obviously that was a, a sort of set. So... Could you tell me what a typical set looked like in Battlestar Galactica? Yeah, so, um, I mean, generally from the beginning, we had the CIC, which was like the, the command center, where it was 
like a quite a large room with multiple layers. So at the center and the bottom level, you had the, the big panel, I guess, where they were around and some screens above where you probably always saw Colonel Ty and Gaeta and yeah. sometimes, you know, the Admiral. Um, and then where you would have to walk up in the higher areas where they had like panels of computers. But our set, our, the um, set decorators, the, the artists or the, um, the art design for the show was so phenomenal. The level of um, specificity that they had at the same time um, there was also like the they just looked old because it was supposed to be an old battleship so they had patinaed everything and um, it just had had a, even when you picked up a phone there's like a weight to it and uh, just being able to be immersed in a surrounding that showed you visually what it was supposed to look like um, even when you were in the areas that probably you weren't being filmed in, it helped create the reality being in that space. So you had the CIC, which was this, like vast room. Well, it wasn't a massive room, but like it was certainly a place that could contain a lot of people. And then uh, the hangar bays or the hangar decks, um, it was kind of like a really long loop. So okay. it could feel like you're going on and on and on and on and on but you're kind of doing sort of a big loop with like little doors that would go to other places yeah and I suppose Grace uh, those fighter pilot scenes are iconic it was iconic in the original Battlestar Galactica and then tell, tell me about those fighter pilot sort of scenes are you just hovering from a, a wire you're starting a ship and this are you on a lift or a crane or something like that and digital effects uh uh, coming in the background or how are they start to shot? Well, rarely we used uh, cranes or lifts um, because uh, a lot of it was green screened. So okay. um, the only time we were doing cranes were maybe in the pilot, you see Athena, be, or sorry, you see Boomer kind of taking off and leaving Hilo on the, you know, on the, the yeah. planet getting bombed. So in that case, uh, I think we used one, but most of the time it's green screen, but there's so much preparation to put on those helmets. We had so many renditions of helmets. You think okay. that once they were all made, they were done. It's like the, you'd have all these other issues like you would need to make, cause they weren't real. We're not obviously really in space, but you have yeah. real problems like condensation. So you'd put them on, but like if you were doing your scene and you guys were breathing heavily, pretending you're being, it would start fogging. And then they couldn't see your face very well. And that was really not good. So then they have to stop and either take it off or, or um, what would happen is they could see through the, the neck strap and the helmet. So they could see it wasn't like a seal. They could see like there was a crack. So you'd have to like adjust yeah. it. These would have these kind of little silly things to show that, you know, cause you couldn't have that in, in the story. Yeah. And so there was a lot of preparation that we had to get suited up with multiple people helping us. And whenever there was like a, uh, fighter scene like in your in the raptor or the viper for the, their characters it was this like multi-step thing of like one person had the helmet someone had the neck strap then you'd have these like special wrist things with like a tiny little looked like a digital watch but it wasn't you know they made it special for the show which initially worked and then they stopped working and then we just scrapped it we're like just pretend it never was there we would just keep adjusting these things and then the ankle they, like buttons would pop off like you'd have all these things and once you got on you would just have to go up the stairs and you couldn't see very well so they'd be like careful and so be, it was like so awkward <laughs> and it was like this quite a few minutes of this and then when you're finally inside you can't really hear very well because you're hearing yourself quite a lot so they had all these like microphones and speakers and it was a bit of an ordeal <laughs> I suppose, Grace, one thing that struck me was in, in terms of uh, the sidelines watching them on TV. They almost looked like massive sort of figures when they were walking. Uh, what, what was a, a sideline? Obviously, you uh, standing directly in front of it and set. Was it nearly oh, was it up nearly seven foot where the robotic, uh, robotic engineer is somebody controlling them with motor controls that they're walking along beside you at the same time? Or how, how did that sort of work? Well, most of them were CGI, but we did have some real ones made. We had two versions. We had the old kind of Centurion, where it yeah. kind of had like that disco helmet, was, which was, I forget why we use those ones, but most of the, the Centurions were these towering robots 
that they did end up building in like a tangible form, but yeah. they might not have the entire figure. They might just have the top half, right? And okay. then they would have it on a wheelie. So you would know roughly like how high it is, but you would have no legs on it or something like that. Okay. So, you know, for us, it, at least it would give you a visual of where to look. And then also you can kind of tell, you know, when you do commercial, when you watch a commercial yeah. and there's like a fake ball running through the thing and you can tell by looking at the actor, are they really looking at a real ball or are they just kind of pretending to look at a ball? Because you, where the, if you're focusing here versus focusing there versus focusing on the, hor on the horizon, your eyes yeah. change. So having that actual figure help because it, it didn't look like they were just looking through the air. It looked like they were actually looking at something in, you know, yeah. beside them. I suppose, Grace, three seasons, 74 episodes. I suppose you covered absolutely everything. I suppose to do 74 episodes uh, over three seasons, that's an awful lot of episodes uh, in terms of Battlestar Galactica. And I suppose you spitted so much uh, content into those sorts of three seasons. You really left no stone unturned. <laughs> well, I, actually, it was four seasons, but... I didn't know it was 74 episodes. Four seasons. Four seasons. Yeah, four seasons. My apologies, yeah. 74 No, it's episodes. okay. Um, you mean, but it's interesting because I never really thought of it that way as to how many topics that we covered because it never really felt like we were just trying to cover as many things as we could. It just, we were throwing things in there. Maybe it was about, um, uh, about the military or things that were happening in real life, we were able to kind of put some of those things into the story, like uh, prisoner of war and things like that, prisoners of war and uh, torture and whatnot. But um, actually the show ended after four seasons. However, while there were negotiations in place, um, you know, Ron Moore had mentioned that he was ready to do one more season. However, okay. he wanted to know at the beginning of season four if he was going to get that other season because he didn't want to write one season and then not be able to finish the story so they could okay. only tell him for sure you have one more season so he said well then i'm gonna finish it in this season so if they had negotiated differently we would have had an, an entire other season who knows what would have happened yeah. but this way it feels really condensed and it just feels juicy and not all drawn out you know so. I suppose, uh, Grace, in terms of your character, I suppose you played uh, Boomer, uh, you played two characters, the sideline, uh, and then you've obviously played Boomer uh, uh, Boomer as well. So you had a love interest uh, there with uh, the chief, uh, Galon, and then obviously your other character then had an interest in sort of Halo. So what was the real difference? Obviously it was you, the same sort of person, but how did you try and sort of make each character different or was that impossible to do given that it was technically you <laughs> well I, I mean even within ourselves you know you're probably different around your parents versus your best friend versus your you know girlfriend or boyfriend or you know let's say a stranger so even within us we keep morphing around and apparently we have 200 selves that we sort of move throughout the day every day which I'm not aware of that, but um, we just make these subtle adjustments all the time. And uh, what I did was initially, I only thought I was one character. So it was easy just to go along with her. But then, um, especially after she, she dies, and I can't yeah. even remember when it was, but at some point she dies. <laughs> like, I feel like she's getting re, you know what, I, have to, I should have actually done my research before talking to you. Before going to that, what I mean is one boomer seemed like her story started getting quite dark and it, you can have two people like even in the same family siblings and they can be so different even though they have the same parents. They could even be twins, you know, so the same age. Yeah. But um, the different things in our life will affect us differently. And of course we all have different souls and stuff like that, but even just the external experience and, you know, she had a relationship with Chief Tyrrell, like this hidden relationship. Right. I think, don't think they were supposed to have. Um, and Athena initially was easy because since she was pretending to be Boomer, all I had to do was just do the same thing because, but I knew she, she had a secret the whole time, but she didn't, I didn't have to make her much different until 
she came back to the the battle star and then she got thrown in the brig she had just such a different storyline and that it started developing that she had uh like an empathy and a heart for the humans and because of her relationship with Hilo and that she was pregnant and not thinking that Cylons could get pregnant it was kind of very unusual so she kind of knew she was in this sort of special situation and um knowing what her goals were about the humans and that the lie that she was carrying, but she was pregnant, made me play her so differently than Boomer who seemed to be more and more conflicted and troubled and dark. And so I didn't plan on it, but the story just sort of lend itself that way. And I think yeah. the, the toughest scene was one where both of them were in one scene together. And I was really worried because I thought I'd have to play it timed out just perfectly where I'm going to have to play one character and then play the other, but it would all have to make, it would have to be seamless. Uh, well, James Callis did that brilliantly, but I didn't have to because they ended up shooting it well, like we we're looking at each other. So you can have one camera this way and then one camera that way. And then you can just snip it with editing. So we did, I didn't have to time it out perfectly. How long is that reaction going to be? But when I did do it, I was watching, um, What's that movie? Girl Interrupted, maybe? Okay. With Angelina Jolie from a while ago. I don't know. For some reason, that comes into my head. And I felt like Boomer was going down this darker, slightly defiant, rebellious streak. And it did not look very hopeful for her. Whereas Athena was moving in this total other direction. So I had kind of embodied one character first. Yes. Yeah. So that they would appear differently. And I suppose... I was, yeah. Apologies, Chris. Keep going. Keep going. No. no it's when um, I went to do that, the director said, what are you doing? Like, stop doing that. Like, he said it was too much. And then I ended up just letting it go. But I think there was enough residue there. So they appear different on screen. Uh, Grace, you mentioned James, Ka James Callis. And obviously, his character, Gaius and Trisha Heffer. It brought the Trisha uh, Heffer, uh, brought the, the Cylon uh, horror character. It brought the comedy to the show. That was the sort of humor in Battlestar Galactica, the, the sort of paranoia of Gaius and uh, obviously this woman that he could see that was oblivious to absolutely everybody else in the sort of the ship at the sort of time. And uh, obviously his whole battle of his sanity and his sort of wits and uh, Obviously, you're on set, and obviously, you're probably not. Some scenes you were with him, and some scenes you saw that plane playing out. When the camera said stop shooting or stop rolling a scene and cut, what was the general sort of reaction? Was James always, were you always able to keep it together, or, or was there sometimes a fit of uh, hysteria or laughter? Because I imagine you're just looking at, at it there, and just uh, obviously, he's trying to play he's cracking up sort of scenario and you have to try and put a serious sort of note but obviously when the camera shuts down then obviously I imagine there was a good bit of crack and laugh at it. Yeah definitely because he's he's so inventive and creative and free and funny so that when we did cut of course there would be times that they would, people would be laughing. I didn't get to do too many scenes with him but if I was doing a scene with him usually my character was so serious that when he was being so ridiculous, it just made my character like judge him more, like you are a fool. So when we cut, there's like kind of a break, there's a reprieve in that kind of tension because like he almost goes further and further down the rabbit hole and it just elicits more of the serious judgment from either Boomer or Athena, whoever. They just seem like they're getting further and further away from each other. But yeah, once we're done, it's, it's so amusing and he's so lovely. And I suppose, Grace, you mentioned Comic Cons and uh, Battlestar Galactica is known all over the, the world, a sort of a famous sort of show from country to country. And uh, yeah, as a as a caster, you're still very close knit, I suppose. I know it's roughly, what, 16, 16 years now uh, since mm -hmm. the start of the show. But do you still, when, are the Comic Cons invites still coming through the door? Are you still getting... Uh, messages on social media about Battlestar Galactica, about your character Boom or fan mail. Even to this day, is there still a real draw within that sort of universe for the show and for your character? 
I would say there's definitely a draw with, um, with conventions. Um, I, but I didn't do conventions for quite a long time. Kind of soon after that, I went to a few other jobs and then one of them placed me kind of in the middle of the ocean. So I was really far away from any other piece of land. Okay. So if I wanted to do anything and like they were just working as like dogs. So if I wanted to go anywhere, there was very little chance that I was going to be able to get off the Thursday or the Friday to travel to Europe or Eastern, you know, the Eastern coast of the States. So I, I kind of partly couldn't do them for a really long time, but I heard that all the rest of the cast were so tight and a lot of them went on Los Angeles or Vancouver. So the LA team was just, you know, they're such tight family. They went like motorcycling together. They would have their children's birthdays together. Um, I mean, a number of us went to each other's weddings. And so we had that. Um, and I've been to some of their 40th birthday parties. And then one of them recently had a 50th birthday, but we had COVID. So we all submitted um, uh, like birthday tribute to them on Zoom and or on video. Okay. And then they probably got that put together. So, and also recently, I'm not sure if you heard, but Colonel Ty, well, Michael Hogan, who plays Colonel Ty yeah. has been, he's been, um, having health challenges for a while. So yeah. there was a banding together really recently about that. And not only what we did for him personally, like sending a, what kind of like video messages and putting that together, but just, you could see behind the scenes of what he wouldn't know because he wasn't on the emails of like everyone vying together and what we could do. So there's a lot of love there. I wish that I was closer with everybody, but I was so far away for seven years um, so I feel like I really missed out on a lot of the bonding, but I still treasure them all and adore them so much. And I suppose, Grace, one thing that struck me uh, looking down about the cast is probably you might think it, but you're also very young in terms of all the primary characters. I'm just looking there, Jamie Barber, uh, John Caius, yourself, Trisha Hefner, Trisha Hefner, Katie Sackoff, Aaron Douglas, uh, Alessandro Giuliani, Tamil Pickett. So there is opportunity there for a movie in three or four years' time and all of you to re-immerse your roles, whether Edward Elmas would want to come back as Admiral Adama. Oh, yeah. who, he will come who, back. <laughs> he will come back, would he? He will totally come back. He even like still signs off on his emails, the Admiral sometimes. It's so cute. So he so, will come back. But don't you, but what about the whole new battle star that's happening? Like, I feel like now there's going to be two different stories. It's like, I don't know if we have to come back, but I mean, I, I'd be open to coming back for sure, but I don't have to. Do you don't have to. Uh, Grace, finally for me, I suppose, I'll finish off I, I finish off with this question in all my sort of interviews. Uh, just in terms of uh, if there was a Battlestar Galactica sort of dictionary and your character, Boomer, was put into the dictionary and they left two blank sentences underneath and they asked you, Grace Park, having portrayed the role, to write those two sentences to describe a Boomer. What would you like those two sentences to read? Ooh, for Boomer, specifically. Boomer. Mm, probably... Um, a Cylon who didn't know who she was and started innocent and um, ended in a troubled way. That would probably uh, be one. And yeah. the second sentence, um, probably she, she cared, hmm. she was open, she loved, but ultimately she lost hope. Uh, on that note, uh, Grace Park, an absolute pleasure talking today. Really enjoyed it. Some great chats, some great conversation. Uh, thank you for taking your time, reliving your memories of Athena and Boomer in Battlestar Galactica. No doubt uh, in 2020 with COVID, as obviously opportunities have been sort of limited, but it seems to you that the doors keep on opening and opening and you're busy out and no doubt that will continue into the future. Grace Park, a uh, pleasure talking to you today. It was really wonderful. I hope all your interviews go well and I look forward to talking to you again. Cheers. Thank you, Grace. Pleasure. Okay. Bye.